Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. My name is Ilona Sonaite, and the show is called Liberation Unleashed. And thank you, everyone, who are joining live and asking questions, and whoever is listening afterwards. And I, I want to extend my gratitude and appreciation to the guys at Mapping Media for making this happen, for making these shows and uh, spreading the message. It's so important these days, and I'm so happy to be part of this. Well, my own goal is to get this message clear and understandable for as many people as I can, really. So welcome to the show. And today we are going to talk about nothing. <laughs> okay, seriously. Well, last month I have been having the same conversation with many different people, and it's just really getting to the point of all, all this, of, on to the point of what is this seeking and how to end it. And well, having this conversation over and over again, it kind of it it's distilled now, so I can share it with you, and whoever is listening, and if you. Um, if you know somebody who wants to hear it, who's ready to hear it, you please pass it on. Also, before we start, I would like to invite you, the listener, to the group event that is happening on the 6th of June on Sunday at the same time as the show, 7 p.m. Eastern European time, 5 p.m. UK time. This is a deep looking event, which is a little bit different setting than this show. We meet in a group on Zoom. And if you like to participate, just send me an email to admin at ilonatonight.com, just my name and .com. So I will send you a link to the Zoom and we can interact and talk and explore together. Um, another thing, if you are speaking Russian, in Russian, there is a, an event coming up next week on Friday and Saturday for two days and we can interact in Russian. <laughs> So, so yes, it's a lot of events going on, and we are here today. So let's talk about this no self. What does it mean? What? How does it work? How does this end the searching? Well, I find that I speak about the same over and over again about the obvious. And <laughs> let's start. I just gonna press this chat in case somebody is asking a question. One moment. Okay, so feel free to ask me questions at any time and I will reply and we can talk about the issues that you want to talk about. And right, and for now, let's talk about no self. What does this no self mean? And how to see it in your own experience? Because the most usual question is, okay, I, I understand this intellectually. I do not see it in my experience. Well, it sounds a little bit funny, but you do see it in your own experience because it's not hidden. It's always here. It's always present. And you do see it. It's just for the mind to understand what is this direct experience, really. So... Direct experience, and the simplest way to put it is what is happening right here, right now. This is direct experience. It's experienced directly. It's not imagined. That's the thing. It's not imagined. So what is here right now? There are colors, sounds, sensations, feelings, perhaps smell, taste. This is experienced directly. That means it's not imagined. And indirectly, it's when we are thinking about it. So, yeah, we can talk about stuff that is not happening and that is coming up from the mind and we can imagine, we can remember, we can project and all that. But the direct experience is just simply what is happening right here, right now. And the most fundamental thing that is right here, right now is knowing knowing of this experience, knowing that something is, that this is, that I'm here, that something exists, that this is real. This knowing, 
is fundamental to all the changing. Because all the experience, like sounds, colors, and feelings and thoughts, they come and go. There is nothing permanent in that. But there is this permanence in knowing. So yes, you always know that something is here. And this is direct, it's intimate, and it's completely obvious when you look at it. So when you say, I don't see this no self in my experience, right? What does that mean? Well, that means there's nothing to see here. There's only what is. What is? And this self or no self, there is it. So how does this self come about? And why do we think that there is something to see when, when there isn't? Okay, because we are looking in the mind. We're looking and thinking about this. But it cannot be seen, just simple as that. Well, like you cannot see no unicorn right now. Like how would you see an absence of a unicorn? Like is, is a unicorn in the room? Well, what it is here is just what is here. The colors, okay, the sensations, everything that is. But you don't see no unicorn, as in no hyphen unicorn. There is nothing to see here. There is no self to see here. So there is nothing to look for in the actuality. Because in actuality, there is nothing that we would call the self. Check it out. Like right here, right now. <laughs> how would you see? How would you know that there is no self here? Or how would you know that there is a self? Okay, and you may say, yeah, there is a self. Here is, here is me. <laughs> and what does this word me point to? Um, perhaps the body or sensations or feelings. But that's not me. That's not yours. It was never yours. It's something that is arising, something that is given. It's like weather. You know, you don't say the weather is mine, the sunshine is mine. It's nobody's. Like the sun is shining for everybody. There is no my sun or your sun or somebody else's sun. It's just sun, the light, the warmth that we feel. So this self or no self, it's not yours. And there is nothing there that, that, would, that would be yours. And you can see like, do you own the colors or sounds or sensations? Well, I think with the sensations is the most difficult because they are so imminent, so intimate, like all this touch. Okay, there is a sense of touch. And what we touch, we say it's mine. <laughs> like this is my shirt, my hair. So I touch it. Yeah, but nothing is yours, really. There is nobody here to own anything, to have anything. And what does I mean mine? It's something that comes in a narrative. In the way that we describe the experience, and it's optional. We can describe experience in many ways, and this I does not become real because we describe experience through these words I, me, mine. So, how do you know that there is a self? We can we can look at that. How do you know that there is somebody here? Well, the first thing to notice is that we have been told about that. We have been told when we were little that, okay, this is you, this is your body, this is your hand. So we, we took it. We took that suggestion and we never examined that. As children, we just soaked everything in. Whatever our parents told us in school, or grandparents told us, we, we accepted that as the truth, as the truth how, of how things are. And 
well, many, many years later, I would still believe in that, that this is mine, my body, my personality, my character. But if you really look at it, there's nobody here to own anything. Like it's all really flowing. There's no, no ownership at all of life. Okay, I can say it's my life, but that's, I would say, poetic expression. <laughs> I have life, yeah, yeah. Nice poetry, nice story. But it's not like I have life. It's life shows up as, as, as me, as this body, as this personality, as the character. So really, what is here to own anything? So the simplest thing is to see in your own direct experience that the colors are not owned, the sounds are not owned, and not controlled, and not something that we manage or manipulate. We may think that we do, but the actuality is that it's not. Like I cannot grow this here, I cannot grow that here. It just grows by itself. <clears throat> and if I'm losing here, <laughs> it's nothing I can do about it. It just happens. So who's here is that? So the colors, the sound sensations are all given. There's no choice in that. I mean, I cannot choose to make these colors different, like green or yellow. It's no chance. So why would they say it's my body or my personality if it's already given? So it's happening. So no self in the simplest way to put it is that everything is just happening by itself. It's arising by itself. Nobody doing it, nobody owning it. There's no management here that, that life is listening to. <laughs> so, so the whole struggle of seeking is trying to figure it out how to manage life how to make this life better, how to fix it. And it seems that I can, because again, we've been told that. We've been told that we can do it. Yeah. We have to change the personality for the better. We have to become perfect, perhaps, or, or maintain whatever is not right. So this, this is the search. It says that, well, this that is happening here is, is really not enough. It's really not what I want. So we are searching to fulfill that one thing, one thing. But one thing is just that one thing. Life does not hear or listen to what we want. Well, we get, we get the gifts every day. We get the gifts constantly. And some say, yeah, yeah, I like this. And there's something else like, I don't like that, or I hate that, it makes me angry. But then the life doesn't care if you are liking this or not liking this, it's just like, have it. Have what it is. Can you allow it to be as it is? So this no self points to allowing. Just allowing whatever is here to be simply as it is, without any struggle, without effort, just remembering to check. Is there anything I'm doing right here, right now, to make this step? Just check for yourself, what are you making happen? And the usual hiccup is the choice, the decision, the free will. And how to see through that, how to see that Free will is an illusion. When it, well, one always say that, yes, I chose this. I made this happen. But it's always right here right now. And there is nothing that I'm doing right here right now. I'm not choosing even the words that are coming out. <laughs> they are just coming out. 
And I don't know what's going to come out before it comes. It just feels like, check it out for yourself. When you, when you are ready to speak, there is that urge to say something, that undeniable impulse to open the mouth and say something. So it's not by choice. It's something that is just flowing out, showing up as words, as emotions, as a response to words, as a reaction, as feeling. So in that flow of happening, there is no force, there is no struggle. It's simply flowing freely. <laughs> no self means it's flowing freely. No self means that there's nobody here to fight it. There's nobody even to, to resist it. So whatever is flowing is happening by itself. The biggest confusion is because of language. The language says, I did this. The language says there needs to be a door. There must be a door. There must be somebody that does it. But without the language, things are still happening. And we don't need to, we don't need to name every tiny bit of experience, every second, millisecond to experience. So when we are looking for no self in thinking, we don't, we don't see the direct experience of actually everything happening. Like this being, being is already here. There is nothing to do about that. Don't need anything to do about that. It's already given. And perhaps you may feel that it's not okay to be, that it is not safe to be, that something needs to change for you to be content, to be happy. And these thoughts are arising also by themselves, just as a, a repetitive pattern, something learned, something given, never questioned. One of the most potent and powerful questions is, what is not happening on automatic? Oh, well, not in a in mechanical sense, but what is what requires a there? What is not happening by itself? You may ask that question and see what arises for you. And we can talk about the decision, how how decisions are made. And the biggest trouble with decisions is that we think that something could have been different in the past. Like I could have chosen differently. And that causes a lot of suffering because we think that, you know, it was a possibility that it could have happened. But like in, we choose whatever choice happens, it happens in the present moment. Like, like just like right here right now. And there is no choosing. There is no choosing what is happening right here, right now. So let's just be with that, that there is no choosing. It's what is happening, what is given, what is showing up, what is coming towards us, what is showing up as us, as situations, as people, as sensations, as feelings. And the search goes on from the idea that there must be somebody here. And it's especially difficult. There's a difficulty to see that when the situation is intense, when we're around difficult people, when we feel difficult emotions. Then the narrative about me, mine, to me, for me, becomes really vivid and strong. 
and well, when everything is well, I don't really think about this me or not me or self or no self. We only, you know, enjoy this moment. But these questions come up when there is a, a wish to fix situation, to fix what is happening. And the narrative says, I don't like this. This is wrong. Something should be different. And in this narrative, there is this me that apparently resists, resists the situation and is fighting, you know. So the more there is fighting, the more there is this me in us, this sense of self, the righteous, the fighter, the rebellion. And without the narrative, when you look at direct experience of what is happening right here and now, where is the me? Without the narrative, there is no me. There is no I. And the shift, the shift that ends the seeking, the very shift is just simply realizing that me is impossible. There never was a me. It's impossible. So you either see that it's impossible and everything is clear or you are trying to find that me something to find the self or no self so you can say aha this is it i know now yeah but this this is it i know now it's just realizing that there is no me i never was it's impossible well and the search is about this well, in liberation at least we call it gateless gate, like crossing the gateless gate. But it's even given in the name that there is no gate. There is no crossing. It's gateless. That means it's nothing. And crossing the gateless gate means just realizing that there is no gate and there is no eye to cross it. Nothing happens. And that kind of you go like, well, <laughs> is that it? Wow, that's too simple. It cannot be this simple. Well, that's a good, good, good confirmation that, yeah, yeah, you're seeing it now. I think when we were kids and we've been imagining all these entities like, uh, I don't know, Tooth Fairy or Santa or I don't know, whatever different cultures may have these different imagined uh, characters and as kids we believe in that magic and we believe what we are told you know innocently by parents or other adults that you know <laughs> sometimes try to keep this magic alive as long as they can because well that's childhood that's awesome but this realization that santa is not real or two fairies not real it's it's one way it's one way shift like from believing into knowing, believing that some Santa entity is real, into knowing that it's fiction. And it's just so simple. <laughs> like you realize that you've been fooled. And ta -da, you know, you can never believe the Santa again. Yeah. And and you don't think, you know, that when Christmas is awful and when parents are arguing or something is going wrong, that you know. Santa may become real because, you know, some intense situation has happened. But with this I, <laughs> with this I, we think that it's real. And we keep imagining it, even as adults. So, yeah, the waking up is just really a drop of a belief. Nothing changes. Nothing needs to become different. So yeah, that's that's the shift. As simple as that. From believing into a magical entity I, or that there is some self or no self to find, into seeing that it's all fiction. That I is impossible. 
there's no nothing here separate or apart from life itself. So we, we don't need to keep searching for this I, for this self, or no self, like with a hyphen. That's the worst one. <laughs> no self with a hyphen, you know. So, yeah, the reality is that in this actuality, everything is given, everything is flowing by itself. And we can see that, and we see that all the time. It's not hidden. It's nothing to find other than this. Just to come back to simplicity and enjoy. Enjoy all the experiences. Well, some experiences are not comfortable, of course, and they are okay too. Now, a little bit about negativity and positivity. It's like a lot of information now flowing towards us, saying, oh, these emotions are negative, how to get rid of them or how to fix them. You know, there is this resistance that I don't like. There is this anger that I cannot, you know, take it anymore. It's horrible. But the only negativity or positivity is found in one thing. The experiences themselves are neutral. The energy is neutral. The negativity comes when I say, I don't want it. That's all. And, and we are wired. This software of human is wired to seek pleasure and avoid pain, just like anyone any other alive organism on the planet. We seek pleasure, avoid pain. So there is always, I like this, I don't like this. I want more of this, I don't like this. I don't want this, this should not be happening. But life shows up as all of it. As intense situations, as horrible situations as peaceful and loving situations. It's the same life. Life is not negative or positive at all. It's just something that is, is. Like, like this moment right now, something is. And just let, let's feel this moment right now. Whatever is here, it is not asking us to like it or not like it. It is not asking to accept it or reject it. It's simply here. And I love this word, allowing. It's completely open open and free to experience whatever is here with this taste of allowing. And through this allowing, we can go into deep rest, allowing everything to be as it is. This allowing is guiding into this depth of being, being open, being present. So let's just allow whatever is here, just for a little bit, to be as it is. The tensions in the body are allowed to the feelings are allowed to to 
So all this holding can just go open up. There's nothing to grasp on to hold on. There's nothing yours anyway. It's just what is here. When you start noticing what is here and allowing this to be as it is, there is no more seeking. There's nothing to seek here. It's all, it's all visible, clear, obvious, present. So in the direct experience, which is here, underneath all thinking about what is not here, there's no seeking. One of the questions that shows up in this place is like, right, so what's next? It's so, again, mind like, right, okay, we know this, yeah, that's boring. But what's next? What's next? What else can we see? What else can we discover? And then even that can rest. Like there is nothing, nothing next, it's just this. Is this enough? And it's not enough. Who says that? Who's there with this claim like, oh, I don't like that. This is something a little bit too boring. Not enough. Not enough action, not enough, I don't know, attention. And even that can rest. See, the mind doesn't understand this and you cannot understand this. What this, this life or reality or consciousness, it, it, it needs something to hold on. Like I know now, right? <laughs> but this awakening process is about unknowing, unknowing. Everything that was learned, everything that was acquired, collected as a knowledge from others. kind of overshadowing this, this joy that is here. It's like we think that there's something needs to be in a particular way, or something should be different, we already lost what is here. Our attention is already away from what is here into what is not. I don't know if I shared this with you before, this metaphor of the painters painting a picture like there are 10 painters or 100 painters right standing on this field and painting the 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 view like okay there is a mountain there is a lake there is some little forest there there's this field and everyone every painter has got their own style and they use their own techniques and their own colors and they all painting the same Right, this artistic expression, wonderful, joyful. And then yeah, you can look at all these hundred paintings and you can see they are painting the same. Like maybe somebody from from more distance, somebody from close up, and variations, huge variations. But you can recognize that, aha, uh -huh, I see the same mountain, I see the same lake and same bit of forest. And what we are usually doing is like we are comparing the artistic expressions, like trying to make sense, like, aha, this, this guy expressed like this, aha, but that, 
He's showing us something different, even though it's the same, but it's like a little bit different. I don't understand this. I have to understand this. And the mind is trying to figure it out, like, all right, I see, I understand this, but I don't understand that. Like, and how to apply this? So we go around, you know, buy the books, we go to retreats, and we're just like picking these bits of artistic expression, trying to, you know, find that understanding when, in fact, you can take a canvas and a brush and just paint your own picture. Just see what you are seeing and express it the way you are expressing. So what is the most amazing in, at the point when the seeing happens, when the realization of this, um, you know, <laughs> unreality of this self or the eye happens is that you are able to express that through your own words, in your own fresh way, that you are seeing the same thing and you can say in your own words, in your own way, and you don't need to compare it anymore. Well, it may be fun to compare it, sure, you know, we can share, but there is no more need to look at that guy's expression or that woman's expression to, you know, see that mountain and the lake. You already see it. You're already seeing your direct experience. It's just you thinking that something is lacking or something is missing. So you are go and pick up like secondhand experience, the expression of experience from somebody else. And that's the whole confusion. But if you bring it home, if you just start looking what is true for you, You may write about it, you and sing about it, or paint about it. You know, it's your own expression. What is true to you? And you, you see, you already know. It's nothing new. It's just kind of landing on that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> And there's a very good question to check for yourself. If you, if you are, <laughs> how to say, past this gateless gate, and the question is, can you really believe that you are separate from life managing it? Can you really believe that? Well, you may forget for a day or two and then come back, but can you really believe that, that you are separate from life happening? That there is something here that is managing this life that is outside, that is making life happen? And if the answer is yes, well, you know, is that your dream life that you are living? Is everything just as you want? or? There are some things that you don't want. So if you are managing this life, why are you making these things that you don't want? So yeah, this seeing directly is just here and now. What is here right now? What am I doing to make this happen? Am I doing anything? Or is it given? Is it a gift? Is it coming <laughs> by itself? Okay. I have a question here from Lily. Does the mind quiet by default when this is fully understood, meaning a stability of quiet and stability of lessening of the previous pattern of many arising thoughts? Uh, I wouldn't say so, no. I don't think that the mind quiets down when it's fully understood. Well, the thoughts continue. Well, in my experience, they are just more, more interesting. <laughs> um, no, but the, the mind doesn't quiet 
just because it seemed that everything is happening by itself. Well, there was nobody here to make that mind agitated before. So it's also happening by itself. But what makes the mind quieter, quieter, and um, what I mean by noise is all the thoughts about past and, and future, about what is now happening. So these thoughts get quieter when they are investigated. Because, well, all these thoughts are about past and future, they are coming by themselves and they are, well, they also want to be seen, they want to be acknowledged. And if they are talking about something painful, they are just pointing to that pain that hasn't been healed and that hasn't resolved. So as long as there is pain, the hurt, the burden, the heaviness, these thoughts will continue to arise. Well, the mind gets quieter when there is no more fighting with what arises. So the noise is fighting. The noise says that something should be different. Oh, I can do this. I can make this. Oh, I, I was wrong and I wasn't able to make this. All this noise is optional, yeah. But it doesn't, the mind doesn't quiet just because you see that there is nobody here thinking. And okay, there may be a honeymoon period where everything is wonderful, when it's sweet and you see how everything is flowing effortlessly. But that doesn't last forever. All the stuff that hasn't been allowed to show up, allowed to be felt, will, will have to arise to be seen, to be accepted, allowed. And with that, the mind gets quiet. So the noisy mind is mind at war with itself. The quiet mind is at peace with itself. Seeing no self, seeing that everything is showing up by itself does not make the mind quieter. Well, not in my experience. In my experience, it was quite actually like I found the amusement park in the head. It was so interesting to see all these thoughts coming up, trying to explain everything and just getting new insights, getting new ways to look at what is. So it wasn't quite, it was more interesting. Like I remember, well, that was 10 years ago, but I remember that I stopped watching TV. I stopped watching, I stopped reading any books, any books. For a couple of years, I couldn't read a book. And it was just more interesting to see what's in here, like what's, what's going on in the mind. But the quality of thinking, that, that changes, yeah. Well, all the patterns that have been programmed in this so-called mind, they continue, continue. Like personality continues, all the traits continue, all the likes, dislikes continue, everything. <laughs> and the mind is not an enemy. You don't need to fight with it, but don't need to shut it up. The there is no problem with thinking. The only problem with thinking may be if we say, yeah, well, thinking is a problem. And then we start thinking about that. And start thinking how this thinking is a problem. But thinking in itself is not the problem. The, the thoughts are just coming and going by themselves. Uh, and if they are taken seriously, if every thought is believed, yeah, they may be a difficult way to live. Because this, this mind, it doesn't know. It doesn't know. It pretends to know. It wants to know. It wants to explain and, and understand but to be honest it doesn't know it doesn't know anything well it's just repeating the words that we, it, it has learned from people <laughs> from whoever taught us language and we learned the different ways to express depending on culture depending on 
where we grew up and the parents and the school and everything. So this mind continues all these patterns. And it's fine. It's fine. You can continue doing so. Okay, so the thoughts of what is not quiet is the mind at war with itself, allowing the pain that has not been resolved to be seen and see that it's what it's not happening. Do you have the right? <clears throat> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, one way to, to bring the mind to peace is, is to bring the attention back to what is here right now. Right now. And allowing this to be as it is. Yeah. And you, you can also notice that there are one things one things come in different shapes and forms and the biggest one things are wanting security wanting to be safe this is like a primary one thing wanting to be safe says that i am not safe right now i'm not safe i have to do something to be safe i have to think and i have to resolve something to be safe so i want to be safe but really that safety cannot be found in thinking about what is not happening. That we can, the mind can get really active and it can try to solve all these problems in the future, but that does not give safety at all. Because we don't know what will happen in the future. There is no knowing what will happen. And we can guess, we can want, we can project, we can assume, but we don't know. It's just like with the weather. Like we can predict the weather for today and maybe tomorrow half a day and then who knows? We don't know. Like, yeah. So the safety is found right here, right now by noticing that here now is safe. It's safe, right? I am safe right now. Are you? Yeah, and from that wanting safety, there is wanting to control. That's another big one. Wanting to control the outcomes, wanting to manage, to attract, to manipulate, to manifest, whatever words these, these days are, you know, more resonant. So we want to control what's happening. And yet whatever is here, it cannot be manipulated. There's simply no control over, over what is here. Okay, the, uh, Sam is asking, should resistance to life be allowed even when we know that resistance causes suffering? Well, yes, yes, sure. Well, <laughs> resistance here is also part of life. So resistance is that I don't like this and then we can agree, yeah, I don't like this. So what? So what? I don't like this. Uh, I'm going to this back on the change anything. Like imagine if you are going to um, to a restaurant, right? And you want to order steak, but they don't have steak today. They have some, you know, vegetable soup <laughs> and you don't like it. So the waiter says, well, look, sorry, we ran out of steak. And you say, well, I want steak. You know, this restaurant is horrible. They don't have steak. And I'm so upset about this, you know, this sucks. My life is horrible, you know, and just all that narrative because I don't like, I don't like that they don't have it, but they don't have it. So it doesn't matter you like it or not, the fact is they don't have it. So will, will you have the soup? Well, you can stand up and leave the restaurant, sure. But you can be at peace with it. Like, okay, they don't have it today. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow. The steak is good here and I will have it. But, you know, fighting with it, like, what's the point? 
but it's okay to feel like I don't like it. It's okay. It doesn't. It doesn't change anything that I like it or I don't like it. Let me just read another question. Okay, I'll ask, ask, uh, look at Lily's uh, comment. Oh, just one more thing. Would this seeing by everyone definitely result in a more peaceful world? Would personal anger vanish? <sighs> Good question. It's an individual thing. You know, if I see this, doesn't mean that my mom or my dad stop fighting. No. If I see this, I may stop reacting to them fighting, but they will continue fighting. And that's from experience. Yes, if more people would see that in their own experience, then yeah, definitely this world would be way much nicer place. We could we could meet each other as we are without trying to change each other, without manipulating, without all these psychological games, without you know needing to feed the the victim or perpetrator or the savior roles. Yeah, we can be at peace and we can just get along and, and share love, be kind, be understanding and but this seeing, seeing itself that everything is happening just by itself does not change other people. Well, they may feel nice around you or not. <laughs> Who knows? You may be triggering something deep in them too. So the answer, yes, the life would be way much nicer if everyone could see that for themselves. And no, if I see other people, don't change. My reaction may change. You're very welcome, Lily. All right, and I'll go back to Hitesh, if I say that right, or Hitesh. You are talking on behalf on, on behalf of life, right? Right, right. Well, <laughs> but you still have to manage bread and butter for living and. For that, you have to play mind game in the world, or you can think that all is only happening. Also, want to know about cause and effect? If you can explain, please. Okay, thank you. Well, yeah, we don't need to play mind games anymore. Well, what for? What for? These mind games are only serving the the illusion that there is somebody here that can manage, manipulate, pull and push, avoid and you know all that. We don't need to continue with that, definitely not. And yet still you go to work, get your bread and butter and you go to your family and you love and take care of them and you also have arguments and you know, whatever is happening is fine. That's the thing, whatever is happening is fine. Yeah, and there is no more war or fighting. Only when you are making peace with your with yourself with what is and cause and effect. <laughs> it's a great question. Well, yeah, for the mind, there is a cause and there is effect, and there are all these theories, all these ways to explain and to know. And you know, we can start from like karma. It's a wonderful concept to talk about. Like, you know, you do good, good things happen, or you do bad, bad things happen. That's cause and effect. But in actuality, which is right, right here right now, in this direct experience of perceiving this life, there is no cause and effect. The cause and effect comes only in the mind, thinking, and thinking, and trying to understand what this is. But again, the mind does not know what this is. It only can repeat what it's taught. Like, okay, we can say, yeah, I know I am, I am on the planet Earth. How do you know? <laughs> I've been told, right? And they say, well, the, the Earth is round and it's spinning in space. How do you know? Really, how do you know that? 
we've been told. So this cause and effect is also something we've been told. Like, okay, this causes that and that causes this, but in this moment right here, right now, what, what is causing this? Or what is effect? What, what is this effect of? Right. Something that is arising by itself out of nowhere it's just here <laughs> so don't try to explain this i mean you open your eyes the colors are here like do you need to know why do you need to know why these colors are here or what causes them okay we have eyes we have brain there is light entering you know all these things we learn but in direct experience of color there's just color it has no information where it comes from. It's just here. It's given. So, yeah, we can look at life in two ways. One is through trying to understand, to figure it out, to put everything in the concept and make sure that all these concepts and all these beliefs in the mind, they align, they are coherent. And if some new information comes in, then there is like, ah, oh, okay, this doesn't fit my understanding right now. What do I do with that information? I reject it. <laughs> or if I allow it, then everything that I believe has to be, you know, rethought. So it's a bit of a challenge for the mind to keep all these, <laughs> how to say, ducks in a row, try to understand. But we can look at life as this mystery that it truly is. You can wonder, like, wow, <laughs> this is happening. Mm. And that, that wonder is silent. It has no explanation. It doesn't need an explanation. It's just like being in awe. Wow. You're seeing something bigger, something amazing, and, and soaking that in. You know, if you are looking at a sunset or sunrise and it's just so beautiful, do you need to understand it? Do you need to know where the sun is coming from or where is it going? Or how is this earth spinning? Are you just looking at these colors, at this amazing view with no explanation and you don't need it? That's the wonder. That being open to receive, to perceive, to be here. And you don't need to understand anything about sunsets to enjoy it. And you don't need to understand anything about life to be alive, to be living it. So we can, you know, talk about cause and effect. <laughs> but what for? For fun, yes. For entertainment, yes. You know, that also can be fun. But one thing to understand that mind cannot wrap this into these tiny concepts. <laughs> and the word God always makes me smile and giggle because there are so many, so many different understandings and trying to explain God. Like, all right, this little mind knows what God is, right? I've seen it. <laughs> I know what God is. <laughs> and I can tell that others you know what God is. Like, listen to me. I know. But it's just hilarious, truly hilarious to, to you know, because this, <laughs> this is so much bigger than the mind. So there is only one thing left, it's just to wonder. Wonder and be open, open to whatever shows up, allowing whatever shows up. And sure, we need words, we, we can communicate these uh, words are coming out just like anything else, like colors and sounds and sensations, there are words, yeah, part of experience. But somehow we kind of 
put confused with words thinking that it's the most important thing. It's not. <laughs> I keep repeating this example lately about the chocolate, you know, like you, you receive a chocolate candy and it's wrapped up in the paper, you know. So, so I give you a candy, like a chocolate in a paper, and then you unwrap it and then you put the chocolate on the side, like, eh, but look at that paper. Wow, that paper is amazing. Yeah, I'll keep it. <laughs> this is all I got. Oh, look at that paper. It's so good. When this chocolate was a gift, really, it's not a paper. Paper is just something to, to wrap the chocolate up so I can give it to you, right? But instead of receiving the gift of chocolate and experiencing it, like savoring it and feeling the whatever is happening there, you look at the paper, the words, and like, oh, that's, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, so these words, the words used, they only kind of wrap up the experience into this, you know, um, expression so we can, you know, pass on the experience, point to something, something that is experienced. But we take the words as something so meaningful, so precious, and so serious that, yeah, we forget to look at the experience. Isn't that crazy? So I guess that answers about the cause and effect. And uh, yeah, if not, we can talk some more. Let me know. Okay. And um, let's see what else we have here in the question. Uh -huh, just one second, sis. I think we can still have anger, but without self guilt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the freedom, the freedom is to feel, not from anger or <laughs> just um, uh, unwanted emotions, but to feel. It's okay to feel anger. It's completely valid and it's completely right to feel anger. Well, it arises by itself. It's not you doing it. It's not your anger. It's not something happening to you. It's something that arises. It can also be allowed. It also wants to be seen. It wants to be respected, acknowledged. Right? So if you feel anger, you can just simply bring it up by like repeating the sentence or sentences that give that rise of anger energy. And as you have it here in your body, you can look at the energy that is in the body and perhaps it's in the belly or in the throat or whatever is showing up this anger. You can simply allow it to be there and look at it. Like with this wonder again, you know, what is there? What is this energy? And simply allowing it. Because it's safe to feel. It is safe to feel any, any emotions, any movements of energy in any intensity. Like you are not going to explode or die if you feel anger. And anger doesn't need to be expressed out on others as a punishment. It can also be seen and, and valued and seen as a powerful, powerful energy that perhaps is informing an, about a change needed. And perhaps it's giving the energy for that change to happen. But you can investigate that for yourself. And yeah, you don't need to feel guilt about feeling anger. It's not your anger. It's an energy that is here as a response to what is happening. And see what happens if you just allow it and respect it. Again, we didn't do anything at all for these patterns, for these programs to be here. You know, our software was included when we were born. <laughs> we can cry, we can laugh, we can get angry, we can be sad. We didn't do any of that. It was given. Like fear is given, joy is given, like the colors. The 
colors are given. So if we open eyes and we see colors, our heart can see these emotions, these energies in motion. So it's also like a, an eye, you know, the heart's eye that sees the emotion. So it only sees what is here. It's not making it. So if you are seeing anger arising, there is nothing wrong with that. There is no problem with anger at all. The problem is in that I don't want this. If that is believed, that becomes this, this struggle to get rid of it, to run away from it, to avoid it, deny it, and all the other stuff. To distract, whatever, you know. If, if this anger feels something wrong, then there is an agenda to get rid of it. The worst thing is to think that, you know, if I am a spiritual person, <laughs> I should never get angry or, you know, getting angry is wrong or that is unspiritual. But no, no, there is no unspiritual emotion. They may be thinking that it's unspiritual, but um, emotions are neutral. You know, it's okay to feel anger. It's okay to feel joy. It's okay. It doesn't have to be pleasant or unpleasant. We don't need to you know, judge everything in that way, it can be okay. Well, if it's here, it's here, right? So resisting anger or accepting anger is still like, you know, playing with the same stick, you know, it's two ends of the same stick. But it can also be allowed and on it. Like it's, it's an ancient mechanism. Like even if you look at the animals, they get angry. <laughs> so what? They get angry, they get happy. And so is this human thing, you know, you can get angry and it's fine. It's more important, what does this anger show about you? What is there that is hurting? Perhaps it's pointing to something that has, hasn't resolved yet. So it wants to get resolved and this anger is like a, a flag. Look here, look here. There's something here for you to investigate. Mm -hmm. The question is, but what about anger, guilt, sex, grief, emotion? Are they also happening? Well, of course they're also happening. Are you making them happen? That's the question. Are you doing anything to make them happen? Or is there something that arises? Because if you are making them happen, why do you do that? You know, why do you want this guilt or grief? I might, uh, I'm going to sit here now and just going to make the grief happen. No, it doesn't work like that. It's the same like you don't make weather happen. It may sound like a little bit of a distance thing to make weather happen, but it's just the same. It's like this emotional weather is just the same like weather. It's happening. Like wait, one day you wake up and, and the mood is like dark and gloomy and everything looks through that mood and your day goes like with the head down and depressed because you know that's that's what's happening. That's the mood. And then at the day you wake up and it's like, oh great, what a wonderful life. Oh, let's run around and play stuff and meet people. It's also happening. So it's not like I'm making some things happen, but not others. It, it's impossible. There's nobody here to make some things happen. And I know in this age there's a lot of talk about manifestation like i manifest this and i manifest that and i attracted this and look if i repeat these affirmations then perhaps i made this happen and look at that i'm so great like i get myself a medal for making this happen but the next day something shitty happens and like what what happened to that did you make that happen too but if you see that everything is given there is freedom in that. Just to admit it. Like, yeah, truth. Everything is given. Everything that needs to happen, happens. Everything comes without effort. And I'm not talking about the effort where you, let's say, uh, 
want to be good at sports and you have to train hard. That's that's a different thing. I'm talking about that life is, is effortless. The flow of life is effortless. And you can see that. You can simply see. Not think about it. That's that's the thing. You, you don't think about it. You see it. Now look at this. You know, you don't need to name every color, every shade of color to perceive what is in your room right now. You know, there is this perceiving of color without naming it. You're seeing. Simply seeing, and the naming comes after it says, oh, well, this is the wall, right? This is the, the window, and there is a tree outside. But you see that tree without naming it, right? And what you see is this, the shape, this beauty, with and without words. So just check for yourself and what is that you are making happen? <laughs> to be honest, a couple of times in my life, I thought I made weather happen. It was funny. It was funny. It's like, right, I want a bit of sunshine. And then, you know, right in the middle of the sky, these clouds open up and I get the sunshine. I'm like, wow, I'm amazing. Look at that. <laughs> but then again, where's that one thing came from? The one things are also given. Like, can you want whatever you want? Or the one things are also happening. And we talked about one things before, but can you want whatever you want? Or you just want what comes up as a one thing? <laughs> uh, somebody says hey guys nothing actually exists and nothing is actually happening here you go yep well that's a very nice story beautiful Be beautiful poetry I like it and yet I'm reading these words there is, there is a response to these words there is something actually happening And I agree, truth is another concept. Yes, truth is another concept. Because, you know, what is this truth that we're all looking for, right? So we need to wrap it up in words again. And we look at this wrapper, like, oh, look at that. I got the truth finally. Yay, <laughs> the truth. <laughs> yeah, but it's again another concept. And what is here doesn't need words. It's just what is here. Okay, uh, can we take this self-inquiry even back than the self? Can the self be also seen as an object? Well, when I see word the self written with a capital L, and assume it's the same as the word God, like the whole or being or existence. And in some cultures, it's, yes, that's how, how this is expressed. But I, I would rather not use this word in this way because, well, it's confusing confusing right um, well firstly we need to define what is the self to be able to talk about this what is the self so I don't know what we are talking about this this whole the God the light the love I don't know. Well, if anything is seen as an object, again, there is this conceptual thinking. And yeah, we can talk about it. We can share about it. We can read poetry about it. <laughs> yeah, why not? But there is no self. That means it's 
zero, like nothing, impossible. In a way that Santa is not real, the self is not real. And if we are talking about life as a whole, as itself, like life is happening by itself. So this word self means completely different thing. Itself, just by itself. And we don't need to call it that. We don't need to call it self. <laughs> so if to answer this question, I would really need to know what you mean by this self. in this context. Okay, so Sam is asking, is life like a ride on the roller coaster with nothing we can do other than be taken for a ride? Well, yeah, yeah. We, are, we have been taken for a ride. And we are on that ride. And the ride continues, like you can call it a trip. If you ever had some psychedelic experience, you know what I mean. The trip is like you realize that it's so clear and open that there's absolutely no control. You are being shown. You're being taken around. You are being on a ride. So, yeah, this life is like this. Only when we come off the psychedelic experience, we think that, yeah, wow, that was great. That was a trip. But this, this is not a trip. This is like we're managing everything. <laughs> it's another trip. It's just um, a different content, but the trip continues. So yeah, like imagine if <laughs> if this wasn't the ride, like would you would you have chosen the experience that you had the horrible ones? Would you? It's not fun. Like if I, if I'm choosing this life to be the way I want it to be, it would be only fun, only good, like great, awesome. But things happen. And I cannot say I chose only good, but I didn't choose only for the bad one. Well, well, how about we didn't choose anything? It's all given. So we can fight with the ride or we can enjoy the ride and it's also given. So all this me is also given. All this confusion is also given and the illusion is also given. There is nothing that I'm making happen. I can think that I'm making happen, but that's right, entertainment. At best it's entertainment, of course it's suffering. How to see that this life is a trip. I'm just simply noticing what are you making happen right now. So that's the answer. What are you making happen right now? And when is it not right now? So it kind of cancels that question whatsoever. This question doesn't make sense. And when you see that it doesn't make sense, you go, that's it. Enjoy the life, enjoy whatever is here. And when it's so tough, no day will pass. There is nothing permanent, neither good nor bad, neither intense nor effortless. And everything changes like weather. Can we have a permanent sunshine, a permanent summer, or it rains storms, there's thunder, there's destruction, shit happens, falling down happens, getting up happens. <laughs> and it may seem that there's me and life has taken me for a ride. But you can also see that there is no me at all. There's just life. 
having a ride as me. It's not like a ride happening to me. I'm here helpless and hopeless and I can't do anything. I'm trapped. That's again thinking through that idea that there is somebody here separate from life. But there's nobody here separate from life. There's just life showing up as, as the experiences, as people, as situations, and also as colors and sounds and feelings and emotions and thoughts. So the ride continues. And <laughs> this ride is in the story park. You know, we all love the stories and there's so much drama and so much juice in the stories and all the movies, entertainment and the games and everything is the story, 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 story. And then you think, right, these stories are great. You know, I am the character in the story. I am playing. I am, I am this, you know, it's a game. <laughs> but it's not a game. It's no player. It's just what is happening. And it's happening to nobody. It's no personal. It's something that is rising. It's not owned. Life is not owned. There is no little piece of life that I own. And if you don't like the word life, you can use your own word. And there are many variations to that. Okay, or consciousness, or God, or being, or existence, or nothing, or everything, wholeness, and oneness. <laughs> it's just endless words about this, even this, or, or, or the simplest word is. I like that, is. Just is. So the right is about, is, is this isness allowed? How am I going to fight it? And even that is the right. Even that is taking you for right. So you can't really say, okay, from now on, I stop fighting. No more fighting. Yeah, till next, till next moment when somebody press the button and then like, ah, you know, <laughs> it goes again, right? Or like, I, I stop seeing, seeking. Like I decide now and stop seeking. It doesn't work like that. Okay, um, the response from Red G. The question falls away as I myself don't know what the self is. The question is just came out of nowhere. Maybe it came out for some spiritual concept. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a very good point, actually. You know, we are using all these concepts without actually checking them, what that really means. What that means, how does that connect to my experience? We learn the language, we learn the concepts, and they all point to something. And we take these words and we use them, but like, really, what does is, what is the word mean, the self? Or what does this word me mean? Like, what does it point to? So unless we can be very, very, very precise with words, and define these words in a conversation, like what does it mean in this context? We are just, you know, throwing words like tennis ball, right? Like, for example, what word reality? Right? Okay, what, the, what does word real mean to you? Not what it says in a dictionary or what it says in some books, but what does real? mean to you so if you can define word real for yourself then you, you kind of you can use it in, in a more precise way and uh, communicate the meaning with the hope they can land somewhere like as you as intended 
Because if I say word real, for some people, the unicorns will be real. For some people, the eye is real. But unless they say, okay, real is that simply that which is not imagined. Like what is here right now that is not imagined, that for me, that means real. So then we can talk about real. But even dream has its own reality. So it's just what is happening here now. That is here now. That is. That's again this little word is. Yeah, let's go. What what real is that which is. And real is that which is imagined, which is not here, which is not. So if you're looking through that word real, then is I real or is it imagined? Like, okay, the colors are here, definitely here. I can't argue with them. They are. The sounds are here. I can't argue with them. <laughs> I, I, I can't stop imagining the sounds coming or, you know, particular sounds coming. And if I, if I put something in the mouth, there is taste that experience is, is actual, it's real. Let's call it that for now. And I can imagine that I'm eating a lemon or an apple and I can, oh, okay, yeah. Build that image in the mind and imagine the taste, but it's not real. Because as soon as I stop imagining, it's not here. It doesn't exist. So this word I has been imagined to be an entity. It has been imagined to be this being that is managing and, and manipulating and you know deciding what happens in life. So what, what changes if you stop imagining it? <laughs> you are left with what is real. And you don't need to imagine so much. You can live your life without imagining, without overlaying this that is with all these imagined narrative about this I, me. Well, we still need to use language, of course, but <laughs> you can see that this word I is not what I am. It's not an entity. It's not the manager. It's not the co-creator of life. I like that. We are co-creating life. <laughs> it makes me laugh. Um, talking about the painters again. Right, okay, so this guy is painting a painting, right? He has a table full of colors, full of brushes, and there's this canvas, and there's this beautiful painting is coming out, you know. So now let's see, is this, is this brush a co-creator of painting? Well, no, no, it's just a brush, you know, just a tool, a condition for the painting to happen. You need to have a brush. Well, you can paint with the hand, but in this particular case, this brush is being used, and it's not co-creator of painting. Like there's no credit for the brush. Or the colors, you know, the colors are not co-creating the painting. They are being applied. You know, that's a condition for this painting. That's what is, what is showing up here in the situation on that canvas. And they are not creating the painting. They are being used, right? So the canvas is also not a co-creator of, of art. It's just there. It's there as a condition. And then if you look at the guy at the painter, so it's the guy creating the painting. Well, I can see he is, but you know, it's the guy not the same as the brush, a condition. So is the guy co-creating the painting? Or is this something that is being used for that painting to show up? For that expression to, to be fulfilled? So is there a co-creator of painting? Because where does this art come from, really? It's not coming from the guy, not from the rush, not from the canvas and from the paints. It's just, it's a, 
it's life showing up as all of that, as all these conditions. And when all these conditions come into one place in precise moments, something happens, some magic happens. And if you ever painted or done any art, you know that in that moment when this art is happening, there's just no thinking. There's just flow. It's like the hands moving. There is knowing what, what to do. And it's just without any argument, something is flowing out. So how can you say that you are co-creating life when, when you are this life showing up as you, as this wonderful, wonderful experience, expression of what is here? And like right here, right now, I'm not talking. Like there is no I in here talking. Like the words are coming out. It's just flowing out. Until I get that, aha, uh -huh, say that. Not even verbal. It's just like this is coming through. You know, it's just coming through. And this is just a condition for it to come through. The mouth is moving. It's a condition. The body is here as a condition and whatever is being said yeah i can call it a poetry because it means nothing you know these are words about words about words but in your, your own experience just being here and listening it's actual it's here for now. <laughs> so yeah, we can see the words as well as the brushes and the colors. And there is this ability to paint in words, to express, to talk about life. And it can be enjoyed, it can be entertaining, it can be annoying, who cares, you know, this is just something showing up. And if these words that came out through here may help, may assist in ending this seeking for something that doesn't exist, for something that is not here, and shows you that you already see what is, what is actual, then great. Then great. That means these words landed somewhere. They've done what it's intended. And with that, I will finish this monologue. <laughs> and thank you very much for all the questions. And thank you for being here with me and for listening. And I want to invite you once again to, to come to the monthly uh, Zoom meeting, which is on Sunday. And we can interact in a different form. We can talk and we can look together. So just, just a reminder, if you like to participate, send me an email or you can find uh, the details on my website, which is ilonatonaita.com. So the email address is admin at ilonatonaita.com. And I will send you a link to join the Zoom meeting. And for now, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And the guys at Nothing, thank you for hosting me. And I'll see you next month. Bye for now. <laughs>